Hello, it's Susie from Nail Care Education, and I just did a video about doing a reverse French, so I thought I should do a video about traditional French, where you lay the French line down first. Let's get started, get my sparkle back. So I've prepped this nail and it's pretty much ready to go. I do have a video that you can check out on how to prep the nail. Okay, so I put the prep step on it, which this is a dehydrator to get it ready and clean it up. And this is a primer and I haven't put that on yet. I'm just going to paint the primer on gently. When you put primer on, you don't have to hit the acrylic. It's more for the natural nail. If you get the acrylic in there, it's not a big deal. You just want to hit the natural nail. I love this color. This is a rose gold and I'm going to use it. It's by Magnetic. You can see the sparkle in there. And that's going to be my French, okay? So because this is a traditional, uh, I'm going to put my um, French down first. So this is my pink that I'm going to use on the bed. That's the sparkles. And I'm going to cap it with a clear. You have to do that because when you work with sparkles, most sparkles, you can't file on it. You have to clear cap it in order to file, okay? It also is what gives you your strength and structure. So some of you have been asking me about forms. I guess a lot of places use tips. Um, I don't prefer a tip. I guess maybe it's just the way I was taught, I, and maybe that's why it's traditional. I always have used a form. I like a form because a form is a piece of paper, as you can see, that's shaped to fit under the nail. And I like a form because you can shape it to whatever you want. And I know with tips you can too, but they're much more rigid, much more stiff, and you have to find one that fits the shape. This just, I can custom make it to any shape, and it fits right away. So the advantage of this is it sits under the natural nail which is what you want to do. Tips sit on the natural nail and then you build up from there. To me, I know it's only a little tiny bit, but it does sit a little bit higher. I prefer the paper, the form, because it does, everything sits below it. I should do a video on how to place the forms and stuff and I can go into more detail. But when you're placing it on, you definitely want it to go under the natural nail. Okay. Okay, so just to mention, some of you have asked about this too. I like to use a number eight oval, and it's a sable or a weasel tip, whatever the company that you're buying from uses. I like these brushes because I can really get a crisp French line with it. It's got a nice point on it. There's lots of different shapes you can use, and I'll, I should do a video on that too. Place your bead right there and now I'm shaping the French line in. This is the way I've been taught to do it and I've been doing it this for my whole career this way. And you just, as best you can, shape the French shape, that nice smile line. Now I will say working with a sparkle, I love this color and I really want a sparkle and one day I will do the white, but when you work with a sparkle it does give you a little bit more play time. I don't know why, chemically, white dries up much quicker, but when you put sparkle, even sparkle white, when you put some sparkle into it, it seems to cure a little bit slower. I'm sure there's a chemical reason behind that. I find when I do the reverse French, I got quite a deep smile line. Now when I do the French this, what I'm calling the traditional way, you can do that too, but I find just over the years I've just never developed that super strong smile line with this particular method. So I'm going to go a little bit longer, but you can see my smile lines getting in there. You see how much more time I have to play with that just to see if I can get it accurate? It really, it really takes a lot longer to cure up. That's pretty good. So I'm going to add another bead on the end. So I'm just going to get a little bit more length out of it. And I'm going to keep it quite thin because I want to add the clear cap on top for the strength. I 
just be careful. You see the tip of mine is hitting the nail plate? Be careful, make sure your tip is clear of product because that tip will get some sparkles on there. And sometimes they're hard to get off. If you do get them on there, sometimes you can just take a little liquid and scoop it off, scrape it off with a cuticle stick. And if it's really stubborn, just file it off. Okay. So if you can see it sideways, I've got a nice smooth arch there, but you can see it's quite thin. I'm gonna turn it so you can see down the barrel. You can see how thin that is. That's important. You don't want it to be thick. Okay. So now I wanna do the bed, the pink on the bed. And of course, you've got all this sparkle on your paper towel, if that's what you're using. Flip it over so we don't get any sparkle on the bed part. So I'm just gonna gather my pink bead. So when I do this bead, I don't actually wanna bring it over top of the sparkle, but you can bring it right up to it. The reason why you don't wanna bring it over top is because unless it's clear, it will cloud your sparkle color. We don't wanna do that. We don't want to make our sparkle any duller. We gotta get as much out of that as possible. So you can brush back like this. Just make sure you do not go over top of your sparkle. And making sure your cuticle is nice and smooth. So you can see the color is laid in, the French end. Now I just need to clear cap it. And the clear capping doesn't have to go over the cuticle. If you've done the pink in the cuticle exactly where you want it, we don't want to make it thicker. But we do want to make sure it's structurally sound. So in the center, we're going to clear cap. This is a bead of clear acrylic. And I'm just going to place it right in the center, right at the stress point. And I'm going to make sure I flatten it out to the sides completely and it's gonna come right over top of my sparkle. This will be what I'll be filing. I always say it's like, it's like encasing a picture in a frame under glass. The sparkle is the picture, the clear capping, of course, is the glass. You're just protecting it is what you're doing. Okay. You can just smooth it out. Obviously, you'll be filing it. You can smooth it out with the file. There we go. Sparkle's coming back. And if you look down the barrel, you'll see it's still not too thick. It's nice and capped and encased. So when you're working with a sparkle as opposed to a white, a white is quite solid, and right, right to the tiniest little bead. But sparkle, of course, it's got chunks of sparkle in it, so it's broken up a little. But a good thing about a smile line is what you're looking for is the points on either end. When the smile comes in, it goes to a smile part, but it comes up to fine points on either side. Easier to do with a white or a black or something without a sparkle in it. But when you have something with a sparkle in it, as it goes up the side, it breaks up a little bit. So sometimes to make that fine point up the side, you just need to add a tiniest little bit of sparkle to make that fine point. It could be just one sparkle. Hard to do when you're talking this tiny little area. So right now I'm just taking a little bead of sparkle. I'm gonna sort of just jam it in the side there. And I'm just trying to make it into a fine point with a bunch of chunky little sparkles. And I'm gonna try to scoop it up into a smile line. And just that tiny little sparkle added in there gives it a nice, clean, smooth point. Those are the little details, right? Just bring it right up into a sharp little corner. So as I go, I do make sure they're dry. And then I take these off. You can reuse these, but I don't. They're not really that great for you reusing. So just make sure it's dry and then just get rid of them. Ooh, it's pretty, look at underneath. You can really see how pretty it, the color is. Of course, when you're clear capping it, the clear cap as it's going on and when it's drying, it's quite cloudy. It looks ugly. Sometimes it makes you question the color choice. <laughs> Once you file it and then gel coat it or polish, whatever you're gonna do, 
It's beautiful. It just shines right up again. I can see underneath it gives you a sneak peek of the color. Which is a good argument for shortening nails right off when you're doing a set like that. A couple more fingers, we're almost there. Some of you have asked about my liquid dispenser. This thing is awesome. The reason why I like it so much is because you put your liquid, of course, and fill it in the bottom, and then you can dispense or pump out by hitting the center, it pumps the liquid out. You just use what lands in the well. The product has a pretty high evaporation rate, so having this little thing in here, just you use whatever's in there and it never contaminates what's going on inside the bottle which is really cuts down on waste too, as long as you use what's inside the well. Some people use a little dappin dish, and of course, once you're finished with it, you gotta chuck it out, right? But this, you, this is the only amount you'd ever chuck out. It's quite useful, I like it. But if you do buy them, you must make sure it has a label saying it must be used for acrylic liquid. The mechanism is inside is not meant for anything other than acrylic liquid. They look the same, but the mechanism inside might be for remover, and if you use liquid, it'll just eat it right up. Doesn't work. So just make note of that. Okay. Okay, I'm just starting to file them now. I've got them all in. And you know what? I was thinking of going square, but I don't know what I was thinking actually. I'm going almond. It's my favorite new shape. So let's go almond. So I'm just gonna start filing these up. So I'm able to shave them up pretty quickly, but this is a carbide bit. I've talked about these before in a lot of videos. These are really chunky blades on there, teeth on there. They're pretty serious. So when you're taking stuff off, you don't want to go near the cuticle with this thing at all, especially a naked cuticle without any product on the cuticle. So make sure you stay far away from it. This is just for taking off a lot of product. Because these are square, and I started with the square, I am gonna take off the corners with the carbide bit much faster. Just taking all those corners right out. Just take it on an angle, and just take out that corner. It's rough, but you can certainly file that up with your hand file. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know why I didn't just shape the mint almond to begin with. Old habits, maybe. Die hard, right? I think it doesn't take me as long anymore because I got better at application. I used to, like, I can do it within the hour, like, both hands with my clients and within the hour, and I used to spend 10 minutes prepping and then 10 minutes putting all the stuff on and then a half an hour filing. But I got better at application quite a few years ago and now I'm much more precision. So now five or 10 minutes prepping and I take about 25 minutes to put it on much more precisionly and then it only takes 10 minutes to file it up. So like I say, still the same time frame, just a better work pattern, that's all. Just much more refined, much more experienced. Okay, and start to shape some guys up. I think I've got most of that thick squareness away. And I'm just gonna go attack some cuticle a little bit, try to smooth out the cuticle. And I use this bit. This has got made a bit more of a blunt end. It's still a carbide, but not near as chunky. And it's got a nice blunt end on it just to go around the cuticles. That's a great bit. They call it a safety bit. The last minutes with the hand filing to shape them up in a perfect almond. Okay. 
So there's two ways we can finish the nail. We can buff it really smooth, make it nice and soft to put on a nice shiny coat of clear, or we can leave it the rough side like this and put a gel coat on and nuke it, cure it. I always say nuke. I'm just so used to it, but I understand that's not really what we're doing. Okay, so I'm prepping this one and getting it ready for a polish application. And then I just put the oil on. You can even see with the oil how it shines up. We always put the oil in because no matter how good they wash their hands, they never seem to get the water and stuff right into the cuticle to get rid of any of the dust. That's why the oil goes on there. You can see that's nice. That's, you see that's so sparkly. So when I put the top coat on, it's even goes sparklier. Lovely, let's finish up the rest. Well, that was a lot of filing, but I got the almond out of it. I should have thought of that from the beginning. I don't know what I was thinking. So now I'm gonna shine up the top coat and I like to use a UV blocking top coat. I like it because it shines up the sparkle good. And if you have like a pink or a green or a blue, it really plays on those colors too, but it'll work really well for this as well. So I'm just gonna paint a clear top coat on it. You'll be able to see, I would hope, through the camera there how shiny it makes. I mean, the oil brings out the shine a bit, but not like a top coat. Oh, that looks good. Wow, that's quite a difference. <laughs> Beautiful. I'm always amazed when I put the top coat on. I haven't worked with this color for a while. I haven't worn it for a while, I don't know why. What was I thinking? That's so pretty. So I let the first coat soak in a little bit with acrylic and gel. It does soak in a little bit, kind of dulls a little once it dries. And then I put a second coat and that makes it really quite shiny. And that'll stay shiny. I'm polishing this sort of upside down. That's why I put most of the bulk near the tip because I don't want it to, with gravity to flow right down. I'm trying to do a good job. Oh, isn't that pretty? Ooh, I can't wait to do the reveal shots. These photos are gonna look good. Nice. Now to do the other hand, it'd be nice to have them the same. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that video and don't forget to subscribe and I got a lot more videos coming. <laughs>